Welcome to Perspective. On Perspective today, we will be looking at issues that has to do with the FCT. First March 2022, the Senate and House of Representatives voted on 68 bills seeking to amend the 1999 Constitution, fifth alteration 2022, out of which only 49 bills saw the light of day, while 19 bills was rejected. In the case of FCT, the Senate on Tuesday rejected bills seeking mayoral status at the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. The rejection during voting on the report of the Senate Committee on the Review of the 1999 Constitution, 5th Alteration 2022. The bill sought to alter the Constitution to create a democratic governance structure for the FCT through the office of the Mayor of the FCT, Abuja, who is to be democratically elected. During the voting, 62 senators voted for the bill, while 25 voted against. On the other hand, the senators also rejected Bill No. 61, which is on the appointment of minister from the FCT. This bill seeks to give recognition to the constitutional status of the FCT by ensuring that a person who is a registered voter and resident in the FCT is appointed a minister representing the FCT in the Federal Executive Council. During the voting, 67 senators voted for the bill, while nine bills voted against. Joining us on Perspective today are stakeholders from the Federal Capital Territory. First, we have the former chairman, Abaji Area Council, who is also the immediate past executive chairman, Secondary Education Board, Dr. Yahya Musa Muhammad. Good to have you join us. You're welcome. Also joining us is the president, original inhabitant of Abuja, Oida, Pastor Danladi JG. Welcome to the program. Happy to meet you. On the program, we also have the chairman, National Youth Council of Nigeria, FCT chapter. And he also doubles as the chairman, GNI Group, FCT. And the president, Abuja South Indigenous Group Forum, Comrade Ango Abdullahi Suleiman. Thank you. Very You're welcome. Again, we have a lecturer from the Department of Accounting, Federal University Lafia, Nasarawa State, Muhammad Jibrin. Good to have you join us. Thank you very much. We'll take a break and return shortly. There is no territory, there's no part of this country that has sacrificed for the unity of Nigeria like the people of the FCT. But the question we keep asking is, are we part of Nigerians? Are we even Nigerians in the first instance? We are not. People who are we are not. The current structure we are not. Of FCT. FCT. We are not. We are not. I am a member of APC and I don't think I will ever be able to. But what we are saying is, properly. that is a right. Somebody from the territory, of course, should be represented at the Federal Executive Council. And today, unfortunately for us, the National Assembly Our president has decided to throw the baby with the bathwater. With the plight of the FCT. We expected that President Muhammad Ubari would give us a minister is bigger than many FCT. states in Nigeria. FCT is larger than eight states, both land and population. Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, this is Perspective. We begin with Comrade Ango Abdullahi Suleiman. 2023 elections is around the corner. What is the fate of the Nigerian youth? Basically, what is trending, I don't think we are ready to take the mantle of dealership. Predominantly, uh, it largely depends on who is going to be the candidate of the two major political parties in Nigeria. And of course, we all know the two major political parties in Nigeria is APC and PDP. Nevertheless, the definition of what is youth is a relative terms. In Africa, in Nigeria, the definition of what is youth is different from what is uh, obtainable based on UN, you know, assertions of what is youth. For example, from today, when you talk about youth in Nigeria, people look at you a youth from the age of 18 to 40, even though it's debatable. Some look at it at the age of 30, some look at it at the age of 35. 
And again, politically, when you say youth, anybody below 55, they term themselves as youth, simply because, uh, you know, the structure, I mean, Nigeria as a system, as a nation, has structured in such a way that you keep calling yourself a youth not until when you get to retirement age, which is 60, 70, and above. So if we are looking at it contextually from the view of Nigeria, I think we are going to take it because uh, we have so many people who have, you know, uh, presented themselves to contest for elections in, in, the, in the forthcoming general 2023 elections. For example, Tambua can tell you he's still a youth. Yaya Bello, arguably, is of course a youth. And um, again, Faye can also say he's still a youth within the context of those who have aspired in the last elections or in the previous elections. So what I'm saying in essence is the two major political parties have the tendency of, comparatively speaking, have the tendency of bringing youth. But when you talk about youth in its operational terms, we are not ready. We are not ready in because we don't even have a voice. And uh, I think it's a long time planned. You don't just take a power, you need to compete for it. Just like I think I was privileged to listen to one of Atiku's uh, interview when he said, when they asked him that, uh, can you take over? He said, it's a competition. They should also go to the pool and pick it up. But we are not ready on the basis of so many factors. One, we don't have a leadership that can speak, stand, and protect the entire Nigerian youth. Number two, we don't have the financial capacity to contest because elections in Nigeria is very expensive, is very exorbitant, and we don't have the financial capacity. But the most important thing is unity. When we are united, we can source the resources. We can agree to come together and pull out resources to contest. But we are not united, and it's a deliberate attempt by the government, the elite, I mean the political elite, to make sure that we are sharply divided on political inclinations and political affiliations, uh, regional sentiment, ethnic chauvinism and bigotry in some instances. So therefore, when you look at it holistically, we're not united to fight for it. We don't have financial capacity to fight for it as an individual or as an entity. And by extension, I don't think the political parties are even willing on a platter of gold to allow us to compete and you know have the mantle of leadership as far as Nigeria is concerned. And to Pastor Danladi Jeji, as an original inhabitant of FCT, what is your plight when it comes to dividends of democracy that is making FCT state of its own or appointing an FCT native into the presidential cabinet? Nigerian constitution has caused challenge for us. 1999 constitution as amended, section 147, described that the head of state can give anybody a minister, provided he's an indigent of that state. 23 or 24 years of democracy without interruption. Nigerian government has manage FCT and uh, the way my FCT has been managed it is so uh, it is we can't really understand whether Nigerians are using English in the case of FCT do FCT have indigenous? if there are indigenous, the head of state in the Nigerian constitution session 301 is that the head of state is the governor of FCT. The vice president is the deputy governor of FCT. Now, and he appoints minister according to section 147 that the, that the states will give him minister's position provided that that person is an indigent of the state. The head of state is our governor in FTTO. And you are asking me that indigent day. Now, have you ever heard that any the government have made a mistake to make somebody that FCT have people that are called indigent that they can give the minister? Nigerians know that other states have produced minister. 
the head of state brought them here to become minister in FCT. After their long tenure of serving and managing FCT, and even some people are getting credit on it, they ended up becoming governors in their states. Some of them will bring policy that do not exist. Like one of them brought what is called land swap that does not exist in dictionary and Nigerian embrace it. And the present administration that is on change and belonging to nobody and for everybody arrested that minister for bringing things that do not exist. Bala Mohammed, to be precise, in Bauchi, who is not the Bauchi state governor, and now is aspiring to become head of state. They arrested him because he collected trillions naira because of a project that does not exist, a policy, land swap, collected about 14 properties of his. The same government turned around and said they have adopted the same land swap. Now, FCT indigent do exist. Okay, moving now to Dr. Yahya Musa Muhammad. Looking at what was displayed in the National Assembly on the 1st of March 2022, that is Senate turning down two important bills of the FCT. What do you think played out and how does it affect our national democracy? Well, uh, I think uh, what played out in the National Assembly of late uh, actually has propelled the people of the territory, particularly the indigenous people of the Federal Capital Territory, to demand for more. What the people of the FCT are demanding for, very little, very, very little demand from the people of the territory. As we know, it's a violation of uh, the United Nations Charter concerning the rights of the indigenous people. Today, our languages are threatened. Our history as a people in the territory has been threatened. Our communities have been threatened. Virtually everything that binds us together as a people who actually are historical to this uh, territory has been threatened. What the people of the territory are demanding for in the process of political participation, a mayoral, mayoral uh, council for the territory, and of course, to be given a ministerial slot to become, uh, you know, uh, the, the Section 299 uh, constitution that also is being ambiguous, created a lacuna where, we, you know, we've been played here, right, you know, here and there. That the, somebody from the territory, of course, should be, re should, should be represented at the Federal Executive Council. And today, unfortunately for us, the National Assembly has decided to throw the baby away with the bathwater. And I think this will prepare the people of the territory to demand for more. And I think our demand for now shouldn't only be restricted to the issue of mayoral seat as well as a ministerial slot. No, it should be an outright demand for a state of the people of the territory because our existence has been threatened. Our existence has been threatened. We are not demanding for more. There is no territory, there's no part of this country that has sacrificed for the unity of Nigeria like the people of the FCT. Go to the southeast or south south. Even when you are embarking on developmental projects, you pay for right of passage. Tell me one person that has been compensated and the nature of compensation for the people of the territory. I fear for the people of the territory. I fear for the indigenous people of the federal capital territory. And I think something must be done. And for those who actually do not append their, 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 what do you call it, on the request of the people of the territory, and I think by now they should be regretting their action. And I think this is my take, and the people of the territory would press our demand beyond the issue of the mayoral seat, as well as the issue of uh, uh, ministerial slot. We we'll take our request as the people of the territory beyond these two demands. Okay, Mohamed Jibril. What is your take on what played out on the 1st of March at the National Assembly? What, what is your take? How does this affect our national democracy? I felt we did not learn from history. Because in 2015, it was the other way around. The bill scared through at the Senate, but the bill failed at the uh, House of Representatives. Unfortunately, this time, it was the other way around. This same bill scaled through at the House of Representatives and failed at the Senate. And the rule is very clear. 
if the bill fail in any of the houses, the bill stand rejected. So what I expected our political elite to have done was to consolidate on what happened in 2015. If we can secure the, the support of members of the Senate in 2015, what's changed? What makes us not to support that same, we have that same support in 2019? That means we did not, we went to sleep what happened. We just felt that we can only present it and at the end of the year, we see the light of the day. Like I keep saying, it is, it, you must negotiate. You must lobby. You must reach out to people. You must convince them, make them understand the reason why this thing is not going to cause any harm to any individual. It is for the betterment of the country. It is for the betterment of the system. So, in a situation whereby certain individuals are pronounced or made to look stateless because they don't have representative in certain position is not good for our democracy. So, the truth is that what the people of FCT, we are supposed to have done, was to push further and consolidate on the gains of what happened in 2015. Unfortunately, they went to sleep and uh, what happened happened. I knew there, are, there were still other uh, process for the bill to eventually come into law. But we will have been able to stay through this stage before we now look at how to reach out to governors. We need 24 state assembly to pass it, uh, to third, which is 24 state assembly. We will have been able to reach out to governors of this state, make them understand it, like I said, it's a game of give and take. We have something to give to be able to get this thing. The, the, the advantage of giving that mayoral status to the people of FCT is that even within the city center, the people will have a representative that can be able to push for something that will be of interest to them. If it's developmental, if it is a manpower in terms of capacity building, if it is infrastructure, the mayor will be able to protect the interests of the people of FCT at the city center. Because the city center, as it stands today, structurally, is like it is the capital of FCT. So in that capital of FCT, you have a municipal area council chairman that is as good as not existing. There are a lot of overlapping responsibility where you discover that the minister of FCT overshadows the chairman of the municipal. But if you have a mayoral status, it reduces the power of the minister of FCT. To be able to coordinate and run activities within the city center for the people of FCT. So the advantage of that mayoral status for the people of FCT is that it will give them the opportunity to have one of their own represent them on issues that will benefit them in terms of infrastructure, in terms of capital, um, human capital development, and, all, uh, and what have you. And now, comrade Ango Abdullahi Suleiman. What is your view on the rejection of the mayoral status bill and the appointment of minister from the FCT? I think it was on Tuesday to be specific yes. that uh, 62 number of senators went for the bill and I think 27 went against the bill. It's unfortunate that the chunk majority of members that are kicking against our mayoral status, our ministerial appointment, and other political benefit that is meant for FCT are our counterpart, our brothers here from the northern part of the country. I think to be, to be very, very clear, they don't want us to be liberated simply because most of them, 90% of them, after their political retirement, they cannot sit down in their respective states. So FCT has become their retirement home. I want to unequivocally say it clear that 95% of our ex-governors in the northern part of the country, they are no longer in their respective states. They are living here in FCT. I want to say without a favor or sentiment, 98% of our ex-senators and House of Representatives, Abuja has become their retirement home. So they don't want to allow it to go. They think they want to control it because issue of tenement rate, you start asking them to pay tenement rate. Issue of so many things. And it's so unfortunate that I want to tell them that if they don't allow us to get it now, we'll get it sooner or later. And that's what. And let me tell you one funny thing is our people, our brothers from the southern part of the country tends to even understand our plights. More than our people, we think we belong to part of them. If you are categorizing FCT in geopolitical zones, we, I think we are under not central. So whether you like it or not, not is part of us, not central. So we expected you know, maximum corporations and support from the not, not even from the south. But the southern tend to understand our own plight, that even our northern counterpart. Okay, look at four examples. 
Is it because all of the ministers are coming from the northern part of the country? That's why they don't want to give us our independence? Is it because they tell them to milk the FCT more than other the southern counties? But that's why this is happening. I pray and I hope that next president is going to be from the southern part and let them make FCT. If they are not going to give us, let them give a southern and an FCT minister. You see what's going to happen. They are going to carry us along. Tell me what is happening in FCT. Tell me what is happening. What, tell me our benefits. If we have my URL, status in FCT, whether by appointment or by elections, we are going to see massive development. Whether by appointment or elections, we are going to see massive development in area councils. So part of the area councils, when you, you will never believe is part of Abuja. You will never believe. Some schools in FCT, you will never believe they are part of FCT. Hmm? Some schools, some roads in FCT, you will never believe is part of FCT. And the reason is not far-fetched. You are not giving somebody who is from there. So how do you expect him? Is it not here that some people will come and become minister, they will pack our resources, empower their people, go and campaign and become governors in their respective states? Is it not here? Is it not our resources? Is it a hidden fact? How many ex-ministers we have that are governors today? They made their names from FCT. They pack our resources. All the houses, all the plots that are, are originally owned by us, they collected it in the name of federal government or whatever they call it, and they allocated it to their friends, their relatives, their political gladiators in their respective state. Afterwards, they go and contest, and they make it. And they leave us under perpetual poverty. That's uncalled for. And some of them will even come, they say nothing as far as our plight is concerned. You, I have never seen where a federal capital of a nation is being threatened with insecurity like, FC, like Nigeria. FCT is threatened. We have cases of kidnapping here and there. So we keep saying maybe probably they are not from here. And that's why we're having these kind of issues. They can't tell us that if originally they are aborigines of FCT and they will allow this kind of infrastructural decay to continue. They can't tell us that insecurity will continue. Hmm? What are we saying? When our people are left behind doing nothing, our politicians that are supposed to speak for us, they are left under perpetual poverty before they announce mandate secretary. It was a war. Board members again, it has become a war. Nobody is saying anything. On that PDP regime, sorry to say, they must have done all this announcement long before now. So what are we saying? Who is holding who? Do you want to tell me if we have a governor or a mayor from FCT, somebody wouldn't have called him to order to make this commission uh, announcement? But nobody. They would tell you their answer because constitutionally now, the president is the governor and the, the vice president is the deputy governor of FCT. So therefore, we're going to have so many problems. You know, they don't care. But I keep saying, if people like us are keeping quiet, the younger generations are not going to take it easy. And the, 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 earlier for, for the, the earlier, the better for all of us as Nigerians. Because if FCT is threatened, I think Nigeria as a nation is threatened. Recently, recently, if not yesterday or the day before yesterday, Obasanjo said there might not be Nigerians. I don't know if you are privileged to listen to that interview. Yes. There might not be Nigerians again as a nation. Yes! There are so many agitations. The country is tensed. And when you see agitation and tense everywhere, it's because of injustice. Injustice. You inflict pains on Nigerians as citizens. You inflict pains. I was privileged to listen to an interview. Somebody said he's in Nigeria, he's in Ukraine now. For him to come back to Nigeria, he better remain in Ukraine, even if he's going to die. Because coming to Nigeria is as if he's coming to her. For more than how many days we don't have power supply. Are you talking about our route? FCT as a case study, as I speak to you, if I'm not mistaken, schools are on strike. Tell me one state in the Federation that teachers are on strike now. Tell me. FCT, Federal Capital. And what's the problem? Is it because they are not representing us? Is it because they don't care about us? What are we saying? Schools are on strike. Why? 
and you say you don't want banditry, you don't want kidnapping, you don't want armed robbery, and children are at home doing nothing, and you think it's going to be well with us? It's not going to be well with us. And I keep saying, simply because they have limited time, highest as a minister, you can spend eight years. Then you can park and live out of you know, FCT, but you have compounded our problems. And fortunately for us, any minister, you are either a Muslim or a Christian. You shall be accountable for whatever pains you inflict on the people of FCT. Thank you very much, Comrade Angu. Uh, Dr. Yahaya, please, what is the way forward? The way forward is, as I said, for us that are affected, we are the ones that are in the ring. Yes, we are the ones that are in the ring. The people of the territory, those of us that are indigenous to these people, uh, the, the original inhabitants, we must come together. The advocacy must be heightened up. We must come together, including our traditional institutions, our political leaders, our traditional rulers must also make a recourse to their peers in other states particularly the bordering states that actually brought us into this situation. Our traditional leaders must also make a recourse to their peers in other states so that they can salvage our future generation. It's a quandary situation for us. It's a hopeless situation for us. But we will not rest on our oars until the writing is done. Uh, to Muhammad Jibril. What do you think is the way forward? The way forward is for us to go back to the drawing board. Like I said, what has happened should serve as a lesson to us. Unfortunately, we have a political elite that are divided along tribal, religious, or what have you. They use this as a tool to manipulate their people. Many of these are political elite are not interested in the development of the FCT. They are only interested in the development of their individual selves. So for that reason, it is affecting the progress of the people of FCT. But if they can put their heads together, work as a team, the interest and intention should be for the development of the people of FCT, not for any individual interest, irrespective of party affiliation. If we play our card very well, we have two major political parties in Nigeria as of today, and we have our politicians in those two major political parties, what they just need to do is that to position themselves properly in whatever of the political party that will eventually emerge in 2023 so that we can use the success of that to navigate our way towards making sure that we negotiate what is good for the people of FCT. Okay, thank you very much, Mohammed Jibril. Comrade, please tell us, what is the way forward? Yes. One. we need to be united. Two, we need to know the quality of people we are sending to represent us from councillor to senator because we have limited political offices. And for that, we need quality representation more than any other state in the Federation. Three, three, the youth need to be given sense of belonging. Four, I will advise that all our elites need to know that we have a common goal to achieve as far as FCT is concerned. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. And this is where we draw the curtains on the program Perspective. See you next time. There is no territory, there's no part of this country that has sacrificed for the unity of Nigeria like the people of the FCT. In fact, the question we keep asking is, are we part of Nigerians? Are we even Nigerians in the first instance? That the people who are benefiting we are not. from the current structure we can't of FCT will not allow the Without fear, faith, or sentiment, sentiment, I am a member of FCT and I don't FCT think I'll ever be able to. But what we are saying is, properly. They must negotiate with this people. Somebody from the territory, of course, should be, should, should be represented at the Federal Executive Council. And today, unfortunately for us, the National Assembly Our president has decided have to throw the baby with the plight of the FCT.
We expected that President Muhammadu Buhari Even the municipal area has a water pump there. It's bigger than many FCT. states in Nigeria. FCT is larger than eight states. Both land and population. 